hi my name is Nampumelelo and welcome to my youtube channel thank you so much for joining me i want to encourage you to like this video um oh at the end <laughs> after you've watched and listened uh to share it with somebody and more importantly to subscribe so that you get notifications um when the next one drops i really want to appreciate you for taking this time to watch uh, my channel is here for uh for me to encourage um, anyone who's watching to share my journey of growth um, and to challenge one another okay I want to talk about something that's just been um, you know brewing in my mind for the last couple of days brewing in my heart I guess I say that quite a lot um, but yeah there's usually quite a lot of brewing and I want to talk about our capacity to receive so <coughs> Something that I do is if I, excuse me, if I have been um, sharing with people or talking with some, you know, people having a conversation, if in that conversation, um, you know, a Bible story comes up or a verse comes up, what I've started doing is that I, I actually come home, you know, in the next couple of days, I actually go back and I read that just to refresh myself. Uh, but what has been beautiful is that I actually learned something, you know, more. So I recently had an opportunity to share with some um, believers, um, not preach, we were just chilling <laughs> um, and sharing some stuff. And, and, and I shared on a particular story um, or thought about it, I'm not sure, but I just wanted to come back and just read on it. And I want to share with you what I learned. I learned that... Um, our capacity to receive is not based on our need or the state of our problem <sighs> what do I mean by that what I mean is God always has more in store for us than what we anticipated more in store for us than what we asked for you know but I found that we tend to leave a lot on the table you know we walk away with scraps when the entire table has actually been laid out for us um, it's not how bad the situation is that determines our faith in God for an answer. I, I, I think it is how close we are to the Lord that will determine how open our hearts are to his answer. How open our hearts are to receive. Now, let me read you the story that led me to this. Okay, so the Israelites have gone back and forth with the Syrians and um and this is now towards the end of elisha's life and he he's sick one of the kings the king of israel joash came comes to him um and he says we, 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 we're in trouble okay we've been in trouble but we're in trouble um so that's kind of like the backdrop and it's to say you know um we need help the lord needs to come through for us so let me let me let me read it for you so this is second kings 13 and it's just like about like five five verses and it, it goes like this it says elisha had become sick with the illness which which with ah with the illness of which he would die okay i want to stay there but let me not because <laughs> wow there's so much there okay but it says then joash the king of israel came down to him and wept over his face and said oh my father my father the chariot of Israel and their horsemen. Verse 15 says, And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. And he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. That's the king, right? And then Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, Open the east window. And he opened it. And Elisha, Elisha said, shoot and he shot and then he said the arrow of the lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from syria for you must strike the syrians at apec till you have destroyed them then he said this is um, elijah then he said take the arrows so he took them and he said to the king of israel strike the ground so he struck three times and stopped and the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you have destroyed it. But now 
used strike Syria only three times. Now, it's easy for us to judge King George uh, and say, hey, dude, you know, you should have done the things. But we, we do this every day. We live our lives that do not encompass the fullness of what God has got in, st in store for us. Because when we cry out to God, he, he does come through and he does help us. But the question is, what is the state of our hearts at that point? You know, do we, do we come to him with the capacity to receive based on the level of our desperation or based on the level of our need? Or do we come to receive uh, based on, on who God is and what his ability is? God has given us this earth to enjoy. He's given us air to breathe. He's given us relationships to be in communion with and for us to fellowship with one another. But God has also given us the full measure of his spirit. He's given us the very thing that makes him God. He's given us the very thing that was hovering over the face of the earth waiting for God to say, let there be light and make that happen. He's, he's given us what makes him God and he did not hold back but the question is do we have the capacity to receive it you know because I suppose maybe the real question is do we have the capacity to receive it you know because I think if King George had perceived that God did not only want to win a battle but wanted to completely destroy those who are oppressing him then maybe he would have acted differently so then perhaps it is our perception that is limited right because if our perception is limited then our ability to receive is also limited okay let me let me give you another example where god wanted more for his people than they did where god wants more for his people than they do before I read the verse that I want to read here, I'm reminded of the, of the children of Israel who just wanted to retrieve from their hard taskmasters. But God had another idea together. He's like, no, no, no. I don't want you to have a comfortable life in a place that doesn't belong to you with the people who don't like you. I actually want to give you a land that I promised you long before any of you were born. So I'm going to uproot you. I'm going to move you from this place. That is clearly uncomfortable, which you want me to make you comfortable here. And I'm not going to. I'm going to uproot you and I'm going to put you in the land that is flowing with milk and honey. Um, is it going to be, is the journey going to be easy? No. <laughs> is getting in there going to be easy? No. Is getting the people out from that land so that you could inherit it going to be easy? No. Um, but God had more in store. Um, for his people and he still dies he always has more in store for his people than we are able to ask for and i'll read a verse later on um, that speaks about that let, let me let me give another story so we have three kings king jehoshaphat the king of israel um and the king of edom right because i think jehoshaphat was king of judah let, let, let me read the story second kings three right verse nine um i think it goes all the way up to 20 so hang in there so the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and Edom and they marched on uh, round about route seven days and there was no water for the army nor for the animals that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. So they were going to fight against the Moabites. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elijah, the son of Shaphat, is here. We poured water. Who poured water on the hands of Elijah? So this is way before Eli Elijah gets sick with the sickness of which, which, of which he will die. Um, and then Jehoshaphat, this is now verse 12. Jehoshaphat says, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel, right? And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom went down to him. Then Elisha says to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of, of Moab. A level of unbelief. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not 
that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him and he said, Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Right? For thus says the Lord. Now remember, they came here because they had been marching around about for seven days, right, in preparation for their war with king of Moab. And in those seven days, they ran out of water for the people, for the army, and they ran out of water for the animals. And now they want to go to a prophet to hear, are, are we just going to die? What's going to happen? Um, so now the prophet asks for a musician, musician starts playing, and then this is what Elisha says. He says, um, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. So dig ditches, right? For thus says the Lord, you shall see, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain yet that valley shall be filled with water so that you your cattle and your animals may drink verse 18 and this is a simple matter in the sight of the lord he will also deliver the moabites into your hand also you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every piece of land with stones now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by way of edom and the land was filled with water these guys just wanted water and 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 the lord is like this is a simple thing I'll give you what you really need. What you really need is victory. The kings, they just wanted water, man, for themselves and their animals. But God knew what they truly needed. So the issue is not God's capacity to give that is restricted. It is our capacity to receive that is limited. And I believe that our capacity to receive is determined by our perception. Can we perceive it? Can we perceive the need here? I'll give you an example. People have dreams and they, you know, some dreams are just like, you know, too many beans. But some dreams are like, God is speaking to you. And I've learned to realize that um, that's usually bait. Because <laughs> sometimes we go to God and we want to get the interpretation of the dream. And that's great, you know. Um, cities and, and nations have been saved by people dreaming and someone giving an interpretation that's fantastic but sometimes it's not a, just about the dream it's about God drawing us closer and wanting to give us more now we could go to God and get the interpretation and move on with our lives or we could just linger there a little bit longer and realize that there is more you know to receive in that place Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask, all things, according to the power that works in us. That's Ephesians 3 verse 20. My prayer is that God would heal the parts of us that don't trust him enough. That God would heal the parts of us that don't trust him enough to ask for more. That God would heal the parts of us that don't trust his integrity of heart you know because when you have been disappointed it is so easy to um, put that on God as well to expect that from God as well may he heal the parts of us that don't trust him to give us what we truly need and more even if it is not what we have asked for because the truth of it is that God knows. It comes down to trust. Do we trust God? Do we trust that He knows? Do we trust that He cares? Do we trust that He is able? And more importantly, do we trust that He is willing? My prayer for you today is that God would heal the part of you where your perception doesn't allow for more. I pray that God would heal your capacity to receive because God always has more um, in store. Hannah um, was barren and she came and she prayed to God and God gave her a son. But that was not the only child that she had. She ended up having more. 
And so God always has more, always has more. And there's nothing wrong with asking for more from God because he never runs out. I pray that you would open up your heart to receive, that you'd open up your heart to heal, um, and open up your heart to remain close to God because I believe that it is us dwelling in the presence of God that our minds are renewed, that our heart's capacity grows to receive more. You know, um, Caleb says, give me this mountain. And he's like, God promised me. I still want what was promised to me. Um, we can pray for our families to be saved. And that's great. But we can also pray for the nations. So our capacity to receive grows as our proximity to God, as our closeness with God, as our relationship with God grows. May you be blessed. I encourage you to, um, now that you've listened, <laughs> to like, um, share this with somebody. And more importantly, subscribe so that you can get a notification when I share more videos so that we can go together, grow together. God bless you.